Today is the day that I was going to put my chain plates back on. You notice the operative word being was. I've got them all lined up, ready to go. I've got my bolts and nuts and washers ready to go. And I've got my butyl tape to seal everything up with ready to go. And then I whipped out my tube of 3M4200. Not ready to go. For those of you unfamiliar with the product, that's the tube, that's the tip. And the idea is like anything, you jab something sharp down there to break the seal and then you screw on your plastic nylon tip. However, you will notice the missing ingredient, the plastic tip, a two cent part. Today is the August 1st long weekend, holiday day, nothing is open. I bought this um, particular tube from Steveston Marine and they're not open. I'm not sure why I omitted to pick up the tip when I bought it, but clearly I did. And now for lack of a two cent piece, I'm kind of stuck for being able to put my chain plates back on, which is rather disappointing, kind of an integral part of the boat. And uh, it'd be nice to have that back on so that I can call the rigger up and uh, move forward. But such is, but that is not the case. That's not what's going to happen today. So I'll have to find other things to do today, like maybe some, I don't know, exciting sanding, something like that. So one must be able to adapt and adjust to the situation. I don't have sealant and able to put my chain plates on, so I'm going to see what else I can do on the boat in the meantime, rather than waste a day. I'm here, might as well do something. Stay tuned, I'll let you know what we're going to do. So I've come up with a plan. I'm going to epoxy some of the craters on the bow of the boat in preparation for primer. And then I'm going to sand the primer that's on the back of the boat. That won't take me all day, but perhaps in the meantime, I'll find something else to do. So. Time to get busy. So I got the epoxy laid down and then one of the guys from the club dropped by and I was kvetching about not having my caulking tube tip. And uh, he was very sympathetic, as guys usually are. And away he went. And about 20 minutes later, he came back. And in his hand, he had this. And he said, Ronos is open today. So I just stopped by the caulking department and grabbed one. And it's the exact fit that I need to get my chain plates on. So the schedule has now changed again. I've got epoxy on the front, which is a good thing. Uh, I'll have to sand it down probably tomorrow once it's cured. And then I'll pick up some primer tomorrow too so that I can prime the front here. But for today, I can do some chain plate reinstallation. Very exciting. Well, the best part of the way through getting the chain plates back on, the Reinstallation of all my chain plates. The boomkin tangs are back on. The bowsprit whisker stay tangs are back on. And four, yeah, four of the shroud chain plates are back on. And I just got busy, so I didn't actually film anything that I was doing, but I thought I'd take the time to show you the process with one of them rather than bore you with all of them. So these are the shroud tangs and online I have watched other folks reinstall these on West Sail 32s and other boats and what they will do is they will uh, cover the entire backside of the plate with 4200 or 5200 or some other polysulfide type caulking bolted in place but when you remove these things after they've been treated that way the backside is usually covered in rust and what I've learned is that 
stainless steel needs to breathe. It needs little oxygen after it's been wet in order to um, dry out and not corrode. And we don't want corrosion. So the pro process that I am employing is to surround the bolt holes with butyl tape. And then when I mount the plate on the side of the boat, I put a little 4200 along the shaft of the bolt and in the bolt hole and then push them in so that any gaps for ingress of water in the hull will be filled and it'll form a nice donut around each of the bolts uh, to prevent water from seeping in that way. At least that's the theory. I think it's a good theory and that's what I'm going to do. I can't see anything negative about it. I consulted with a, a, a metal worker guy and he said that would probably be the best approach. So that's what I'm going to do. Observe. So there's one side of the chain plate complete. Now in order to do the other side, I have to flip it over, lay it down. If I do that, all my nice sticky butyl is going to pick up all the dirt and crap off the workbench. So I've devised a cunning plan because I've always got a cunning plan. And what I will do is I will actually put the bolts through their holes. Like so. And then when I put the tang down or the chain plate down on the bench, the uh, end of the carriage bolt will keep the butyl off the table. And it's only the butyl underneath the carriage bolts that I'm interested in anyway. So there we go. butyled chain plate. So now comes the uh, task of actually mounting it on the bolt. I have a couple of challenges with that. One is that I'm doing this by myself, which is difficult at the best. Fortunately, the day has turned cloudy and it's quite a bit cooler than it was when I started this project. And the third thing is that the, the nuts that go on these are inside the head. So it's a very cramped, awkward, and uncomfortable uh, spot to be putting nuts on to bolts. Plus, it, they're going to be covered in 4200, which is like working in glue or molasses or a combination of the above. Um, when I took them off, when I took the nuts off the bolts to begin with months ago, I was using an open-ended ended wrench and a socket. The shallow sockets don't fit. Deep sockets definitely don't fit. A universal joint on a socket doesn't fit. The only way to get to the nuts and get them off was with a wrench. So what I've decided to do, I went out and splurged and I bought a ratcheting wrench so I can actually fit that over the nut and work it. It should, in theory, make my job a little bit easier. The last challenge that I have is wasps. The um, starboard side chain plates had one... No, two wasp nests. One was actually right where the bolt hole goes through. Another one, they had actually found their way into the boat and built a nest inside one of the cupboards. I discovered that WD-40, of all things, is extremely effective at knocking those suckers out of the sky. You just give them one good squirt, stops them dead. So I've got my WD-40, I've got my chain plate, 
I've got my 4200 and I think I'm ready. So let's go. Wish me luck. The wasps have not made a showing, which is a good thing. And I'm ready to put the nut on the top bolt of the chain plate. Now in the video where I took the chain plates off, the bulwark here is impossible to get to from the underside because it's full of foam insulation. Somebody decided to insulate the boat and their solution for doing the bulwark was to use expanding foam. So all of the hardware that's mounted on the bulwark is impossible to get to not without digging out tons and tons of foam so my solution for the chain plates was to just drill one inch holes in the bulwark which is what i've done here now they weren't quite lined up they were lined up sufficiently to get the nuts off but not to get them back on because you have to have the nut square with the bolt in order to start it otherwise you're going to cross thread it so i just expanded the hole a little bit with my hole saw and now i'm going to put the nut and washer on. Now getting a washer on a bolt inside of a bulwark through a one inch hole is kind of difficult. So what I'm going to do is to use my little mini pry bar here. I put the socket over the pry bar then the washer over top of that. I'll put it in the hole until the pry bar hits the end of the bolt and then push the washer over top of the bolt and I'll be able to retrieve the socket without losing it and I'll have the washer over the bolt. I've done this before so I know it works. Just like that, we have a washer on. Now for the nut. like that. First nut and bolt have been installed and synced up. So now it's time to climb into the bowels of the head and attempt to do the last three. Come and have a look. We're back in the head. Have a look and see what I've got to deal with here. So normally this would be shelf space. I took that out. This here was a compartment for the uh, sanitation system, which I have removed to do the through holes, but the place where I need to go is up there. I've got that bolt there, that bolt there, and that bolt way up there. And in order to do that, I have to get my body in there cranked around. But nevertheless, I will do it. I will press on. I will overcome. I will succeed. First bolt and nut set took me about two and a half minutes, including drilling a hole to get installed on the boat. The remaining three nuts and bolts set took probably about two and a half hours, but I did get it installed. There were problems to overcome and a very cramped space, but we did it. Come and have a look. So there is the result of my handiwork. It looks kind of a mess because it is kind of a mess, but the bolts and nuts are firmly secured holding that chain plate on board. This, this one here was uh, particularly troublesome because the, the bolt comes through hard up against the uh, forward part of the bulkhead. This side of the bulkhead I cut out. Right, that's uh, fiberglass, or I just cut it out, and that's the forward side on the other side. And the bolt was up hard against it, so I couldn't get the nut on it. So I actually got my fine tool and cut it back. And hopefully I haven't weakened the uh, side of the hull too much. I suspect at some point I'm going to have to uh, replace this part of the bulkhead because it is quite rotten. 
but the same plates don't have to come off for me to do that. It'll just be an awkward job. Way up there, you can see the uh, the third nut and bolt. That was uh, a little tough to get on, but I used my ratcheting wrench in there. This guy here. And it worked. Just peak keen. So, that job is complete. I want to get the bolts for the the aft chain plate on the port side. Uh, it probably won't be too much of a problem to get them installed. I'll show you why. That's them there. Got easy access, big holes. That'll be a five minute job, I'm hoping. And then that'll be it for the chain plates. And after the chain plates are on, it's getting pretty much time to call the rigger to have him come out and measure for uh, shrouds and stays and that kind of thing. But before he can do that, I have to have the boom kin and the bowsprit on. Before I can put the bowsprit on, I have to set the Samson posts installed. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. It's a relatively cool day today. So working inside the boat, it's not too bad. On Monday, it was it was very warm out. And there was like a sauna in here. But today, I have to get back up there and fit the Samson posts in. This is the starboard side. All of the chain plates and tangs are installed. And this is the port side. The tangs are installed. Two of the chain plates are installed. The aft one there is the one that I just did. And of course, there's one missing because I don't have bolts for it. But I have ordered them, they should arrive today, so that'll go on tomorrow. Stay tangs, the bow, sprit, stay tang. <clears throat> I'm just about. Flicker, 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 flicker.